Break it down. Give me yeah. five people you ready to fight right now. Ah. Uh. Timothy Bradley. Paul. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather. Uh. Devin Alexander. And whoever yeah. the fans want to see. Something visual, so you in the head and made your own YouTube based TV show. It's an array of IPAs and fighters on the road. Got a question? Put them in your comment section right below. Barbershop talk while you're sitting in your living room. Pacquiao, Mayweather, and we can't forget the bruise. Coming to you live with the scoops like a ladle. Allow me to introduce the boxing round table. You, yeah, motherfucking tube. It's your boy, Rollo Jenkins. Man, oh man. The end of the year is boiling down. And, uh, you know, typically everybody does their uh, normal fight of the year, fight of the year, round of the year, shit like that. And I, I, I'm going to do one. You know, uh, D Styles put out a video and he requested that uh, some guys put out those videos because I'm sure he's interested to know the opinions of the guys in the YouTube boxing community that he respects. So um, I will do one, um, you know, actually working on the list. But I put together another list because this list to me was so much easier to do when uh, when it comes to fighter of the year and fighter of the year and round of the year and stuff like that. It's just much more difficult, you know what I'm saying? So I have to make a list and, and like fine tooth comb and eliminate you know somebody to come up with my final picks you know it's a um you know people like to always say well it's a tie between this and a tie between that or i'm picking these two no there's only one fight of the year every other fight could be picked by other people but you should only have one fight of the year. One fighter of the year. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's it's tough, you know, you split hairs, but I mean, that's what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? So, this is my list. I got, this is my down list. So, the loser of the year, I would have to say, it was tough pick. It was between Andre Berto and Juan Manuel Lopez. Now, both were in very similar situations. They just kept losing and shit like that. And each loss got a little worse than the last one. But the reason I'm going to say Andre Berto is because... I believe Andre Berto was actually a better fighter than Juan Manuel Lopez. I was less shocked at Lopez losing than I was at Berto and the, or the guys that he lost to. So I'm going to say Andre Berto because I not only never expected him to get beaten by Soto Carras, but I never expected him to get knocked out by Soto Carras. And to me, a guy like Andre Berto should be starting all the way at the bottom he should be fighting on fucking espn2 he should be fighting on fox sports one maybe and fighting his way back up that's a good name good sellable name that you would want to see that would make you want to watch one of those cards more so than any of the other cards you know if if those guys weren't fighting so i do believe that he had the worst stretch in all of boxing. The worst fight of the year. This was a no-brainer. Hands down. That fucking Klitschko Povetkin bullshit. Vladimir Klitschko should have gotten fined. And it should have held his purse for that fight. Listen, and I talked about this before. It's clinching and boxing it's going to happen to a degree it's just natural I understand that 
but clinching should not be a part of a strategy you could clearly see that Klitschko's strategy was to hold this guy as much as possible that was a travesty to boxing that shit hurt boxing a lot for those see the best thing about that fight was nobody really gave that much a fuck about it had that fight gotten more interest and more hype that would have been terrible but anybody who was a peripheral boxing fan you know you can on the outside and you like you know you heard about a heavyweight fight and you decided to watch it that shit would have probably made you never want to watch boxing again and that was some bullshit some bullshit all day every day my inactivity award my inactivity award wasn't a unanimous 100% shut out but it was close it was only one other person in the running but my inactivity award goes to Gary Russell Gary Russell Jr. when we seen him fight two or three times and you know in like 2011 the dude had he looked like a younger better version of Shane Mosley at 135 pounds the dude was amazing you know what I'm saying but now it's like where the fuck are you homeboy you know what I mean it's like I don't know man I don't get it I don't know why the fuck this dude doesn't fight some reason there's always a fight scheduled and somehow he always ends up not in the fight so I don't know what's wrong with that guy but you know as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar says potential has a shelf life uh, my next award goes to shitty promotional job of the year shitty promotional job of the year goes to Golden Boy Promotions for the work that they've done with Deontay Wilder now a dude who has knocked out every opponent that he's ever been in the ring with at heavyweight at heavyweight should be a lot more popular a lot more known and be a lot more talked about than Deontay Wilder is now it's starting to build momentum you know what I mean he's starting to get mentioned a little bit more you know but with a dude with 30 fights and 30 knockouts should be you know I believe that he should be a lot more popular than he is and I know that a lot of people will say uh, you know that award should go to top rank and gear more rigging now but I am actually completely on the opposite side of the, the rainbow with that um with that guy Guillermo Rigondeaux has if I'm not mistaken 14 fights this motherfucker is ranked in some people's pound for pound top 10 uh, some people have him in the top 5 this guy has headline cards on numerous HBO shows and he's only had like 14 or 15 fights that nigga is way ahead of the curve you know what I'm saying? The, I can't think of one single fighter who has been to this level with only 15 or 16 fights. I know he's a little advanced in age, but there are a lot of fighters who are a little advanced in age. You know what I'm saying? But at 15 fights, they weren't where Guillermo Rigondeaux is. So I definitely can't say that he's being underpromoted by top rank. Now... I will say that Bob Barham says some shitty shit about Guillermo Rigondeaux, but the fact that he's fighting for world championships in 14, 15 fights is amazing. So that I cannot say that he's underpromoted at all. The worst fight card of the year, and this one easily goes to. 
Pacquiao Rios. Now, first of all, I think I mentioned this to uh, at the boxing roundtable. I can never remember a time where, see, first of all, first of all, pay-per-views used to be for super fights only, for the super fights only. Then eventually, it started going to whenever Mike Tyson fought some bullshit fights. Then it started going to whoever the fuck they think they can get people to pay for. Because this fight had a main event of two guys coming off losses. I've never seen a pay-per-view headlined by two guys coming off losses. Ever. Ever. I've seen some shitty pay-per-views, but with two guys coming off losses? I mean, I remember Tyson versus McNeely was on pay-per-view. And if I'm not mistaken, this was Tyson's first fight coming back you know, out of prison. But at least McNeely was coming in with a win streak, whether, you know, Tyson was fucking on a losing streak or not. Two guys who had just lost their previous fights and one guy was put to sleep and they put this shit on pay-per-view. That's some bullshit. And if you've seen the card, there was this fat fuck named Andy Ruiz that was a disgrace I mean, when this dude took his fucking shirt off, I couldn't believe that this motherfucker was fighting in a professional boxing match. And the dude he fought, this motherfucker quit. Man, this was just the shittiest. This was the worst car I've ever seen put together, especially for a pay-per-view. Now, I've seen some shitty cards that somehow a fight or two turned out pretty good but this whole card was shit the shit card of the year goes to Pacquiao's Rios and the fact that they did low pay-per-view numbers only guarantees that the next time Pacquiao gets in the ring it's gonna be low numbers the duck award the fighter who ducked the most to me the duck award goes to None other than Kale Brook. This motherfucker have been talking shit for the longest. And ain't stepped in the ring with no body. I don't know how many times he pulled out of a fight with Devin Alexander. Who to me which is as much a beatable motherfucker as Carson Jones was. But for some reason he figures he didn't want to fight that fight. That would have been a good fight to get his feet wet on American soil, but he chose not to, so fuck him. Duck Award goes to Kell Brook. The Why in the Fuck Are You Still Fighting Award goes to, and this was a close one because y'all know who, y'all probably thinking, gotta be Shane Mosley, right? Nope. This award goes to Antonio the magic man tarver this motherfucker wasn't shit before and he wasn't shit after roy jones he talked his way into a big fight with roy jones and that i give him the utmost credit for and that's that's what the fight game is missing because nobody wanted to see him fight roy jones nobody gave a fuck about him and roy jones fighting he made people interested in him fighting Roy Jones. Like literally without doing shit in the ring. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was winning, but he didn't do shit where you like, oh man, I want to see him fight Roy. No. He started showing up at press conferences, talking shit. And every time somebody stuck a microphone in his face, he was talking shit. Now when he got in the ring with Roy, he did perform. Don't get it twisted. But before that, he hadn't done shit for you to think that, yeah, I want to see him in the ring with the best fighter of this era. You know what I'm saying? Nah, he, he, he didn't. But I swear he should teach a class on how to fucking talk your way into some money in the boxing game. You know what I'm saying? I would call it the school of Tarver. The what is all the hype award 
goes to Zhu Shimmy, Zhao Shimmy, whatever the fuck his name is. It looks like shit to me. I mean, you know, if he makes it to 122 pounds, you know what Rigo gonna do to him. You know? I'd even give uh, Mbeko a good shot at beating him. And, you know, but that's if he goes up and wait. You know, I don't know what this guy gonna do, but I'm not interested in seeing him fight. Um, you know, he does let his hands go, but he's feather fisted. He doesn't have great defense and just awkward looking to me. I'm not, I'm not impressed with him at all. You know what I'm saying? Not impressed at all. So that dude, especially coming out of the Olympics, has way too much height. Way too much height. I'm not a fan of that shit at all. And the underachiever award goes to drum roll. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now, Chavez Jr., I believe, is a skilled guy. You know, not so much as a, uh, what you call it, an outboxer. But he makes up for it in tenaciousness and and his chin. You know, he can, he can weather a storm, you know. I've never really seen a guy rock or hit and hurt by a punch. And he can, you know, he can he can put some hands on you. So, you know, I think that he's a, a good fighter. But what the fuck? I mean, like, what the fuck? You signed a fight at 160 pounds and you can't even make 168? What the fuck? I just can't believe... I mean, look, man, that shit don't make no sense. Now, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing him in there with Andre Ward. I think that, you know, it would be a big fight. You know, they can do whatever, make some good money. But I don't believe that he is as disciplined as he should be. He doesn't fight as well as I believe that he could with the right training. I don't think that Freddie Roach is a good match for him. You know, I don't think that he's that type of fighter that Freddie Roach would make a difference for him. So, I, I, I just don't like him and Freddie Roach together. And I think that could be the problem. You know, just Freddie Roach is, I don't know, man. Um, that's, that's my shit list, you know, because this list to me was a little easier to make because for the good, which is coming soon, I have a lot of hard choices to make, you know, fighter of the year, you know, we got a lot of candidates, you know, you got Danny Garcia, you got Mikey Garcia. You have Adonis Stevenson, you know. And it's going to be tough to choose between... Right now, I'm leaning toward Mikey Garcia. Uh, but, you know, when I when I find go through it with a fine comb, you know, it might end up being Adonis Stevenson. Or maybe it'll be Triple G, you know. Fight of the year. Uh, to me, it was pretty clear that it was... Um, Provodnikov Bradley in a sense but Angulo Laura was a damn good fight it was essentially the same type of fight one guy outboxing another guy and then when the puncher got a chance to land a few flush shots the tail of the fight changed so that was that was a very intriguing fight as well. So, you know, it's between those two and you know, I'll make a decision soon. Round of the year will probably come from one of those fights. You know? Or um there was 
a really good round in the uh, Glenn Tapia, uh, uh, James Kirkland fight. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but, you know, there were, there were good rounds in Provodnikov Bradley and definitely good rounds in the, uh, Islan Delora and Lulo fight, you know? Um, so be expecting that one soon. I'm gonna be coming with that one. And, uh, next video I'll probably drop is my, uh, I got my Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow list coming. It's your boy, Rollo Jenkins. Holla at your boy. Yeah, uh, listen, I told you give them something visual. So you in the head and made your own YouTube-based TV show. It's in the radio, might be gays and fighters on the road. Got a question, put them in your comment section right below. Barbershop talk while you're sitting in your living room. Pacquiao, Mayweather, and we can't forget the bruise. Coming to you live with the scoops like a ladle Allow me to introduce the boxing round table Yeah Rollo Jenkins Boxologist Zone 6 Dre BT Pound 78 Fight News Blood Boxing Blood Fist Boxing Beats and Rhymes Female Boxing Fan Carter J Pull Counter Joker Boxing D-Styles the whole YTBC.